All right, we're going to be doing some simplifying of radicals on this question. We Let's take a look at the first one here. 2 root 28 minus 2 root 7 plus 3 root 56. You guys remember how to do this kind of stuff? Do uh, you know what square numbers are? Square numbers, it's like uh, 1 times 1, which is 1, 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 3, 9, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, etc. Now, for what we're going to do, we don't want to use the number 1. Even though 1 is a square number, we don't. It's not good, that won't be useful for us. And uh, I'll just erase this and put my dots here. This is kind of the strategy. Like when I take root 28, I want to multiply I want to multiply two numbers to get 28, and I would like one of those numbers to be one of these. Do you see do any of these numbers divide evenly into 28? Well, 4 does, right? So why don't I put 4 first, and then whatever number comes after, I don't really care too much. In this case, it's 7, right? Now, for you know, but for 7 here, on root 7, none of these numbers go into 7. So that means I actually could not simplify it. And how about 56? Does Do any of these numbers go into 56? Um, I think 4 does, right? 4 goes into 56. Uh, 4 times, uh, let's see, what is that? Yeah, 14, right? I used my calculator there. That's, I should have done it in my head, but whatever. <laughs> So now the reason we did that is because I can reply I can put the root onto each of those, you know, like this. And the point is that root 4 is nice, right? The root of any of these numbers is nice. The root of 4 is 2, the root of 9 is 3, etc. So this is this root 4 is really just a 2. And notice there's no more root sign now, right? And uh, this is uh, same here, root of 4 is just 2. So that's coming along. Um, 2 times 2, so this is really 4 root 7 minus 2 root 7 plus 6 root 14. Now, just like 4x minus 2x is 2x, 4 root 7 minus 2 root 7 is 2 root 7, right? So that's... Those, those two terms um, go together. Let me do that a little bit neater. And 6 root 14, actually that cannot be simplified anymore. So we obtained this expression. And I think that's um, about as simple as we can get for that one. We could factor out a root 7 there, or 2 root 7, but uh, never mind about that. So there we go. Let's see what the next one's about. I'll just copy it here. What happens with this one? Well, let's see. We're going to distribute this across, right? Remember when you multiply, like if I, if I have something like 4 root 2, times 3 root 2 or something or whatever uh, doesn't matter you what you do is you multiply these numbers together and then you multiply the numbers under the roots together right so in this case it would be 4 times 3 is 12 and then 2 times 2 is 4 right we'll see that in a second when we come to it um, when we have root 8 like this it's really 1 root 8 right so 4 root 2 times 1 root 8 what do we get well 4 times 1 is 4 root uh, 2 times 8 is 16 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 2 times 4 is 8. So that works out. Um, good. Now let's uh, we'll see what we got here. Well, 4 root 16. Root 16 is actually a square number, right? The root of 16 is nice. It's just 4. And the root of 4 is 2. How about root 8? Well, root 8 is actually, we can write it 8 is 4 times 2, right? 
And that's going to be good for us because this root 4 is, uh, is a nice number, right? Uh, let's just go slowly, though. So 4 times 4 is 16. This is 24. Here I'm just going to go slowly and put the root on each one. 16 minus 24, that's negative 8, right? And uh, 8 stays. Root of 4 is 2. And root 2 stays. So we get negative 8 plus 16 root 2. And we can uh, maybe write that as a little bit nicer as 16 root 2 minus 8, right? I hope you guys know this little basic algebra identity. Negative b plus a is the same as a minus b, right? I basically just used that right now. Negative 8 plus 16 root 2. If I just reverse the order, I get 16 root 2 minus 8. And uh, both are the same. But it looks a little bit nicer to lead off with a positive coefficient. So that's what I'll... Now, how would you check this? Notice this question at the beginning. It says here, no decimals, right? Right there it says that. But you can check your answers by doing the decimal, right? So for my calculator, I go 2 root 28 minus 2 root 7 plus 3 root 56. I get 27.74. Let's see if I get the same thing here. 2 root 7 plus 6 root 14. Do I get the same thing? Yes, I do. So that confirms that it's good. How about I check this second one as well. 4 root 2, open bracket, root 8 minus 3 root 2 plus 2 root 4. I get 14.6. Let's see if I get 14.6 here as well. 16 root 2 minus 8. Yes, I do. So I'm confident in those answers. Uh, let's do C. What is C? I'll just copy it again here. I see right away we have a, a question that's kind of like difference of squares, right? A plus B times A minus B. So the inner and outer terms are actually going to cancel when we do FOIL. But if you don't notice that, that's not a problem. You'll, uh, If you didn't notice that and you just multiply it out, you'll uh, realize that for yourself. So what I mean is like, let's just foil this out without even knowing that something nice is gonna happen. Root two times root two. I hope you guys remember that root x times root x is x, right? Um, root two times root two is two. Root two times minus two root three. Well, the minus two stays and we multiply the numbers under the root, so we get root six there, right? How about these two terms? I have uh, 2 root 3 times 1 root 2. 2 times 1 is positive 2. Root 3 times root 2 is root 6. And then we have a positive 2 root 3 times a minus 2 root 3. Uh, 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. Root 3 times root 3, as we set up here, is just going to be 3. Now, what I was talking about there is that since this is kind of a plus b, a minus b format, and I multiply them out, I know these are going to cancel. So really, I have 2 minus 12, which is uh, negative 10. And just for a quick check, why don't I just go to my calculator, open bracket, root 2 plus 2 root 3, closing bracket, opening bracket, root 2 minus 2 root 3. And I just want to see if I really do get negative 10 just for a confirmation that my answer is good. <coughs> and it is. One more to go. What does D ask? Um, D is rationalizing a denominator. And there's just a little trick you need to know there. It's called multiplying by the conjugate. Uh, let's see what we get there. You know, when we have this, okay, this is this is the trick, or this, the technique. We're going to multiply this by 1. Now, you have to agree with me that multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, right? So I'm allowed to write equals. But the thing is, I'm going to write 1 in a strange way. You know, like anything over itself, like A over A, no matter what A is, how weird it is, A over A is always equal to 1, right? So I'm going to write something on top and bottom here. The top and bottom are going to both be the same. 
that guarantees that that expression is just going to be equal to 1. What am I going to put up here? I'm going to put 1 minus root 5 on top and bottom. Now 1 minus root 5 over 1 minus root 5 is really just equal to the number 1. Um, and But doing that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause good things to happen. How did I choose 1 minus root 5? Well, what I did basically is I looked here. I had 1 plus root 5. And the technique is you reverse this sign. So the plus became a minus. That's how I came up with that. If it so happened that the question had 1 minus root 5, then over here I'd be doing 1 plus root 5 on top and bottom. Okay. So let's see what happens here. When I multiply this 2 across to each of those, nothing really interesting happens there. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times that is just minus 2 root 5. The interesting stuff kind of happens on the bottom here. Uh, 1 times 1 is 1. And then we have this uh, inner and outer terms cancelling again. 1 times that is minus root 5. Root 5 times 1 is plus root 5. And root 5 times minus root 5 is minus 5. And like I said, we have these two cancelling. So let's see what we end up with here. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Um, now, the denominator is rationalized, but this can be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, there's different ways to do it. Uh, I guess the first thing I would do is notice that there's a common factor of 2 everywhere. So let's divide it out. Now, if I what if I do this? You know, 2 goes into 2 once. And 2 goes into there minus 2. So basically, I canceled off a 2 from here and here. Did I do that correctly? Actually, I didn't. Because when there's an, a minus sign here or a plus sign, that 2 actually has to be canceled from everywhere. So this 2 has to be removed as well. Um, I find this is a very common source of mistakes for students. I think uh, I would like to do it just a tiny different way to... Uh, emphasize how not to mis make a mistake. What I would do to uh, make it more clear is I'd factor out a 2. Okay, let's factor out a 2. So I have 1 minus root 5 over negative 4. And now let's do the canceling. Okay, let's divide both of these by negative by positive 2. So I get 1 minus root 5 over negative 2. And hopefully that will prevent you from making a mistake there. So factor out and then cancel instead of canceling right away. It's kind of like this. If I have this, you know, a lot of students, they think they can cancel off an x here. That's not true. If you add x, y, z over x, then you can cancel off an x because then it's multiplication, right? But when you got a plus here, you cannot do a canceling like this. Um, the only way to do a canceling in that situation would be if there is an x in every single term, right? And then all of those would disappear, right? All right, I'm getting a little bit off topic here. I just wanted to really emphasize that point because it's uh, so common. Now, this is okay. I would kind of like to have my negative be up top, though. So if I bring my minus to the top, I would get this, right? And now why don't I multiply that minus in to get that? And then why don't I lead off with the, the positive term instead? So I think this would be the nicest way to write your final answer, okay? And let's check it. Let's see if these are really the same. You know, this original expression I had here, 2 over 1 plus root 5, at the end here, it's looking quite a bit different. Root 5 minus 1 over 2. But the claim I'm making, the point is that these two expressions are really the same. And we prefer this one because the bottom is now a nice rational number. It's an integer even too. So whereas back here, this was the denominator, the bottom was not a rational number. It was irrational because of that root 5. So I'm just going to quickly check this answer by typing it in the calculator. I'm going to do 2 divided by opening bracket, 1 plus root 5. I get 0.618. Over here when I do it, I do opening bracket, root 5 minus 1 divided by 2. And I get the same thing, 0.618. So I know I have the right answer. So that completes question number 9. Let me just make sure we answered everything here. And we have. All right. Good.